Welcome back to the Britannia Coin Company. We're a coin dealer based in Royal Wootton Bassett in the UK. Today we continue on our World War I Wednesdays adventure, where we'll be looking at these six coin sets over the numerous years that they've been issued. Last week we looked at the 2015 set, and today's video we're going to look at the 2014 set. So why do we start with 2015 then? Well, George Lucas has done right by himself, making his films out of order, so I thought I'd replicate that. Totally not because I missed that there was a 2014 set to begin with. Our first commemorative coin features Walter Tull. The design features his portrait with infantry men in a trench going over the top and into battle. This design may look familiar because the designer David Cornell created two coins in the 2015 set which we looked at last week, which both also feature the portraits of important people and their contributions during World War I. These coins all have edge inscriptions and on this coin reads as a hero on and off the field. This is an interesting phrase initially, but makes sense as prior to the outbreak of the First World War, he played football for Clapton, Tottenham Hotspur, Northampton Town and Glasgow Rangers. In fact, he was Tottenham's first black player and became one of the first outfield black players in the Football League. Once he joined the military, he quickly climbed the ranks, becoming a Lance Sergeant by 1916 and fighting in the Battle of the Somme. By 1917, he was again promoted to second lieutenant and became the first black officer in the infantry. He endured racism whilst a footballer and also whilst serving in the military. He was mentioned in dispatches, noting his gallantry and coolness by Major General Sidney Lawford when he led 26 men on a night raiding party into enemy territory. Sadly, he was killed in action in northern France on the 25th of March 1918, and despite efforts by his comrade Private Tom Billingham, his body was never recovered. His name appears on multiple war memorials, including in his hometown of Folkestone, on the Arras Memorial and the Roll of Honour for the city of Glasgow. In 1999, Northampton FC unveiled a memorial wall dedicated to him in a garden of remembrance. Our second coin commemorates the howitzer, a weapon prevalently used in World War I. The design features three howitzer guns in the design. It was the creation of Edwina Ellis, another prolific artist who would go on to create more designs over this multi-year set. The edge inscription reads, New and Furious Bombardment. Now the first artillery identified as howitzers saw use in the 16th century. Intended for siege warfare, they would fire cast iron shells full of gunpowder or other incendiary material at fortifications. It wasn't until the 18th century that European armies began using mobile howitzers which were able to move along with the army. By the outbreak of the First World War, these howitzer weapons were much improved with the German army deploying their Big Bertha howitzers which were fitted with a 17 inch caliber barrel with a maximum range of 9,300 meters and could fire a shell every seven and a half minutes. The British military made use of the Ordnance BL 15 inch howitzer weighing 94 tons and being able to fire up to 9,871 meters. By the end of 1914, the fairly equally matched armies went to ground across Europe, locked into a stalemate. These weapons were used during trench warfare in an attempt to break the deadlock. With over 25,000 artillery pieces being made between 1914 and 1918 in Britain alone, there were over 170 million rounds of artillery shells that were important weapons throughout the war. Our third coin features the Royal Navy, with the design showing men loading a gun on the deck of a battleship. David Rowlands, another designer that we've seen in this set already, is behind this design, and it features the edge inscription, The King's Ships Were at Sea. The modern Royal Navy can trace its roots back to the early 16th century, and it's the oldest in the UK's armed services, commonly called the Senior Service. Battling the Dutch and the French Navy in the 17th and 18th century, it was the world's most powerful navy up to the Second World War, in part needed to defend Britain's vast empire. Throughout the First World War, much of the Royal Navy's strength comprised the Grand Fleet and battled the German High Seas Fleet in the North Sea. By the end of World War I, the Royal Navy was larger than the US and French navies combined, and twice the size of the Imperial Japanese Navy and Royal Italian Navy combined, comprising over 1,400 vessels. Prior to the World Wars, the Royal Navy contributed towards science and discovery, conducting the Northwest Passage Expedition in 1741, and later James Cook, who has had his own three-coin two-pound set in recent years, leading three great voyages of discovery. 
In the 19th century, Charles Darwin, another individual celebrated on a £2 coin, was aboard the HMS Beagle on its second voyage and contributed to science with his work on evolution. The next coin is this one here and celebrates the home front. The design is again by David Rowlands and features a woman with a plough working in the field. The inscription on the edge of the coin reads, Speed the plough and the woman who drives it. Specifically choosing a woman to represent the home front due to the invaluable contributions made by the war effort by women across the entire nation. With so many men overseas fighting for their country, this opened up previously male dominated occupations to that of women. Prime Minister David Lloyd George is quoted as saying, It would have been utterly impossible for us to have waged a successful war had it not been for the skill, ardour, enthusiasm and industry which the women of this country have thrown into the war. Prior to the outbreak of the war, there was building momentum for equal rights for women, with the suffragettes movement a focal point of this struggle, but this was paused whilst the conflict erupted across Europe. At the end of the war, having contributed so much, this change finally began to take effect. Further to this, with much of the economy and industry focused on the war effort, those of the home front population endured rations throughout and in the aftermath of the conflict. Our penultimate coin honours the British Expeditionary Force. The designer is another familiar name in this series, John Bergdahl, and features British troops waving to crowds as they board the ships. The edge inscription of this coin is Salute the Old Contemptibles. The British Expeditionary Force, or BEF, comprised the six divisions of the British Army sent to the Western Front. Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany was very dismissive of these forces, issuing an order in 1914 to exterminate the treacherous English and walk over General French's contemptible little army. In later years, the survivors of the BEF dubbed themselves the Old Contemptibles. Over the course of the war, almost 5.4 million men served with the BEF, peaking at just over 2 million at its largest point. Whilst the BEF were deployed, it fell to Lord Kitchener, the newly appointed Secretary of State for War, to raise an army for a war which he, unlike many of his contemporaries, had foreseen as being a long campaign, requiring the country to plumb the depth of manpower to its last million. The BEF first engaged the German army at the Battle of Mons, managing to hold off the advancing German forces. Members of the BEF were awarded the 1914 Star, the 1914-15 Star, the British War Medal and the Victory Medal, in addition to individual medals awarded throughout the conflict. For our final coin, we look at the topic of propaganda. The coin was designed by David Lawrence and shows a man putting up propaganda posters on a brick wall, specifically a poster encouraging the public to lend their savings to the war effort. The coin features the edge inscription, Follow me, your country needs you. A propaganda agency was established at Wellington House, in part due to the extensive propaganda activities in Germany, covering an array of mediums including films, literature, posters and paintings. The newly formed bureau were charged with motivating the country, helping to raise an army and to influence other parties, especially the US, into supporting the British war efforts. We touched on a couple of examples of British war propaganda in last week's video, making use of successful war heroes such as Albert Ball to boost morale and the execution of Edith Cavill to outrage the public to the atrocities of the enemy in war. The British were able to obtain a medal created by Germany after the sinking of the Lusitania and after creating their own replica were able to use this to spread further anti-German sentiments within the US with this medal celebrating the loss of American lives aboard the vessel. There were roughly a quarter of a million of these replicas sold, along with leaflets denouncing the Germans, and it was such an incendiary piece of propaganda that the Bavarian government in Germany suppressed the medal and ordered confiscations of it. One of the most iconic pieces of British propaganda, though, remains the recruitment posters featuring Lord Kitchener above the words, Once You. So prevalent was the use of this poster that the Countess of Asquith, a well-known socialite and author of the time, along with being the wife of the Prime Minister, referred to him as the poster rather than Field Marshal. So powerful and eye-catching, this style of poster would be used the world over in future conflicts. Well that brings us to the end of the 2014 set and do let me know down in the comments which is your favourite coin from this set. For me personally it's the propaganda coin, I love the way that the picture spreads across the whole canvas of the coin. 
Now next Wednesday we're going to be returning to this topic with the 2016 set to show you. So now's a great time to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free to do, it means you won't miss any of our future uploads like that next box. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we post lots of pictures of our products. We're on Twitter and TikTok. We've got our shop and online store and there are links down in the descriptions to our relevant product links in this video. But I'll see you next time for more amazing coins from the Britannia Coin Company.